Welcome to Syriac Origins. In this video, we'll be dealing with Robert Rollinger. In 2006, Robert Rollinger from Innsbruck University in Austria published an article in the Journal of Near East Studies titled The Terms Assyria and Syria Again, where he deals with the topic of where the name Syria came from, a topic that has been debated by historians for centuries. Rollinger, a proponent of the theory that the name Syria was derived from Assyria, states that he has put an end to the debate once and for all. A pretty big claim. So in this video, we will look into this further. My concerns about such theories are not so much the theories themselves, but the way that they are interpreted or, more to the point, misinterpreted. Since in 2006, Rollinger has become a staple for those that want to push for a relationship between the modern day Assyrians and the ancient Assyrians. Simply because, unfortunately, some of our modern day Assyrian friends overextended the implications of such theories to benefit an Assyrian political bias where the usual conclusion that is reached is, since the name Syrian was derived from the name Assyrian, then it stands to reason that the Syrians, or Syriacs, or Syrioye, also came from the ancient Assyrians. This conclusion would obviously lend itself to the ancestral aspirations of the modern-day Assyrians. So do academics such as Rollinger really promote the idea that because the name Syria came from Assyria, Hence, the Syrian people came from the ancient Assyrians, as claimed by our modern-day Assyrian friends. To put it simply, the answer is no. To find out, let's look at the details of Rollinger's paper, starting with the theory itself, and then the implications, and finally, Rollinger's own thoughts on the matter. So, this is a quick summary of Rollinger's paper, published in 2006. Based on the Sesenkoi inscriptions, which is a bilingual Luwian Phoenician hieroglyph artifact uncovered in Sesenkoi Adana in modern day Turkey, let's just keep it short. Long story short, the Sesenkoi inscription dates back to the 8th century BC and contains a Luwian text, Surai, while the Phoenician reads Asul, both referring to an Assyrian vassal kingdom. Rollinger goes on to say that this, the inscription in Sesenkoi provides incontrovertible proof that the Luwians used to pronounce Assyria without the initial Ale. So that is a brief, albeit complicated, summary of the article. For the full article, click on the resources section of the video on the Syriac Origins website. What we are seeing here is Rollinger describing the etymology of the word Syria and Syrian, not its translation and certainly not its usage throughout history. The definition of etymology is a chronological account of the birth and development of a particular word or element of a word, often delineating its spread from one language to another and its evolving changes in form and meaning. Now that we know what the word etymology means, this is where it starts getting interesting. It also seen that these Greeks encountered Sura Suri and Asura Asuri by now, fully evolved equivalents for one and the same region, and rendered them in Greek as Syria and Assyria. These terms were used in subsequent centuries as interchangeable toponymies, although both terms also began to carry special connotations, as was demonstrated by Noldbeck, Schwartz, and others. So, What's so interesting about that, you may ask? Well, Rollinger here is telling us that the word Syria meant Assyria in the subsequent centuries, only in the centuries after the word Syrian was derived from Assyrian. He then says that the words began to carry special connotations. In other words, the word Syria started to mean one thing and the word Assyria started to mean another. This is a change, a change that not only Rollinger acknowledges, but also claims was pointed out by other historians, historians that he himself is referencing and even later clarifies. So what is this change exactly? It's the change in how the name Syrian and Syria was used. So let's look at Rollinger's sources that describe this change, starting with Noldek, from the time the Greeks came to have a more intimate acquaintance of Asia, they designated by the name Syrians the people who called themselves Arameans. Here, Noldek, an advocate of the theory that the name Syrian came from Assyrian, goes on to describe the change in the way the name Syrian was used, 
since the Greeks conquered the region, they became more familiar with the lands and the people living there. They recognised that the people that they had been calling Syrians had actually been calling themselves Arameans. Again, we see from Noldek a clear delineation between the etymology of the word Syrian and the way it was used historically. So let's turn to Rollinger's next source, and that is Edward Schwartz. Schwartz writes, the Greeks had developed a special phrase for the southern Syrians, an after effect of the days when the geographical and historical significance after the original connection with the ancient Assyrian Empire was lost. The Greeks learned that the Arameans, long confined to the countryside of Assyria, had named it Aromia. So, much like Noldek, Schwartz refers to the loss of connection between the words Syrian and Assyrian. They stopped meaning the same thing. In the same way Rollinger said that they meant the same thing in the initial centuries, but they stopped. They started deriving different connotations. But if we look at Rollinger's references more closely, he actually refers to the others. Who are these others? Well, let's look at footnote number 34 that actually describes who they are in detail. The first is Wolfhart Heinrichs, the second John Joseph, and the third Simon Parpola. Heinrichs writes, even if Syrian were derived from Assyrian, it does not mean that the people and culture of geographical Syria are identical to those of geographical Assyria. In fact, Heinrichs is scathing of the conclusions that would suggest that the modern-day Assyrian's ethnicity is based on the etymology of the word Syrian. When he writes, the constant naive identification of population groups on the basis of the identity or near identity of their names, such mistakes, and he goes on to say, are omnipresent in an apologetic literature written by historians with no ph philological training. Is there anybody else spotting a trend here? They all seem to be saying the same thing, including Rollinger. So let's move on to the next source, and that is Dr. John Joseph. There were a time when the West, not fully familiar with the Near East, did not differentiate between Syria and Assyria, especially when the Assyrians were still in power. But as early as the fifth century BC, about two centuries after the fall of Ninue, Herodotus very clearly differentiated between the two terms and regions. Whatever the etymological relationship between the two names, geographical Aram, Syria, and geographical Assyria, were two different geographical, ethnic, and cultural entities. Again, Joseph offers the same story. In fact, the only academic that differs in opinion is the much criticized Simon Parpola. Parpola is a unique case and I will deal with him in a future video. So at this stage, we have looked at Rollinger's references to see how they interpret the etymological relationship of the words Syrian and Assyrian. And if this relationship implicates the Syrian Syriacs or Syrioi as having ancient Assyrian ethnic origins. We know now that Noldek, Schwartz, Heinrichs and Joseph strongly oppose such a conclusion. So now let's focus on Rollinger himself. In a 2007 interview on the Assyrian propaganda website Anya, Rollinger makes his view explicitly clear to his interviewer. I totally agree that these two names mean Assyrian. From an etymological point of view, that is where the name came from, I think it is totally clear. It is an abbreviation of the name Assyria. And again, there's that word, etymology. He is referring to the origins of the word. Am I drawing too many conclusions based on this? Some of you may have probably thinking yes. Well, that simply isn't the case, simply because Rollinger goes on to say, and of course, in this area, Sicilia and Northern Syria, exactly in this time that we are talking about, 800 BC, there were other than the Assyrians, many Arameans, Luwians and Greeks. And of course, the Arameans also used this expression for designated Assyria, referring to Syria. Rollinger then elaborates, generally speaking, you have to distinguish between the two aspects, 
One is the linguistic level where the name comes from and the other is the identity concerning culture, race, blood and things like that which are much more difficult and much more complicated to investigate. So basically, Rollinger himself clarifies that the derivation of the name has nothing to do with the derivation of the race or the ethnic group. Which begs the question why so many modern day Assyrians actually reference Rollinger as a source to validate their claims of ancestral linkage with the ancient Assyrians. This article on the Anya website should be the last thing they should be promoting as it completely contradicts their cause. The reality is that Rollinger's article is continually promoted in this way because nobody understood what he was actually trying to say. I think Heinrich sums it up best when he exclusively singles out the idea that the name Syrian came from Assyrian, thus this means that the Syrians, Syriacs or Sudioria came from the ancient Assyrians and calls this naive and a mistake. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel.